Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mows. In today's episode we're going to be going back to the Honda HRX um, 537, the one with the hydrostatic drive and the rotor clutch on it. In the last video you saw me get it running just by changing the spark plug but it's got a bit of a knocking noise, it looks like it's coming from the exhaust muffler. Um, I'm hoping the bolts aren't sheared off on that and also um, there was a concern that had a bit of an oil leak. So what I've done to it um, since then off camera is literally just drain it all out, put new fresh oil in and uh, just give it a darn good run. Let it run for about 15, 20 minutes, get it really, really hot. It has started to hunt a little tiny bit as well, so I'm hoping just a carburetor clean will fix that. Um, but overnight and the past two or three days, I've been checking it and there is no oil leaks on the machine. So I'm guessing the oil is coming from uh, what's being spelt out of the exhaust because the muffler isn't on correctly. Um, I'm hoping that's gonna be the fix for that. So if this is your first time you're watching Mixed Mouse, hit the subscribe button, whack your bell, set your notifications to all. That way you'll be told when I've done a video or turn them on my Saturday night wiki live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. So without further ado, let's get down dirty and let's check out this Honda HRX. Okay, so here's the Honda HRX um, 537. Um, Lorma, as I say, the exhaust um, is loose inside, so I'm hoping the bolts are not sheared off. So first thing I'm gonna do is remove the muffler um, guard, have a look inside. I have got a spare one, which I've just um, had in the store, but it's silver, um, no biggie. Um, I could spray it black, so uh, I have noticed it's broken here. So I'm just gonna take that off quickly. A couple of 10 mil bolts, there should be three of them. It's broken down the bottom by the looks of it. I'm going to take that off. Okay. So that's no good. That'll go in the trash. Keep them bolts. We're going to need them. There's a bolt down here that looks like it's snapped off. I'll go a bit careful. Well, not snapped off, just so it's gone through the guard. And that's the third bolt I want off of it. Yeah, that's broken. So that's no good. Um, so with the guard off, um, I can now have a look at this muffler. Ah, oh, good, the bolt is not sheared. It's just come loose by the looks of it. I'm gonna try and loosen off the other one, um, just so uh, Curiosity kills a cat. We can have a little look to see if it's actually broken or snapped off. Now go very, very careful with these. You don't, don't miss the shear off. So if it's not gonna go, best medicine is to leave it. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it, okay? I'm not, I'm not gonna tamper with it it feels like it's, it, it wants to snap, and they're, they're renowned for snapping. Um, there's no oil leaks through here. It wants a bit of an air compressor off here because there's, there's lots of dirt here um, built up all and what have you, probably because the exhaust is not actually uh, clamped down. So I'll get my air compressor and blow off just round through here, um, round by the fins. That, that's where the engine cools itself. So let me blow it off, and I'll come back in two ticks. Pretty dirty up in there. As I say, I think the smoke has been, uh, the fumes has been going back onto the engine it, itself, onto the head. So um, that's why it's got a lot of uh, a lot of soot and what have you on there. I've given the um, muffler a bit of a tap as well and uh, blown all that out. So that, that's all now good. So I've got some old pants here, some copper slip, um, only because you know, most people put Loctite on here, but these threads um, look a little bit worn. So all I'm gonna do is just gonna run these in a couple of times uh, just to make sure uh, the threads take. And then as long as um, the threads are good, then what I should do is um, I will then uh, put some Loctite on it to hold it in place. But hopefully these threads will now go in. It's gonna be about there. There it is, I think that's gone. And now I'll get a little tiny 10 mil. Try and keep that as level as I can. Yeah, it's going in. Not too tight, I don't wanna snap it, I don't wanna do the threads in. That's about as tight as I dare do it. I don't think that will do up anymore. No, leave it be. So that's gone in, solid. And now I've got this other exhaust guard. Let's get rid of the old pants out of the way. That's it. And now I've got this exhaust guard. I know it's silver. I've got to spray it up anyway, just to make it look nice. It doesn't look too bad, to be fair. <coughs> but uh, when it's all sprayed up nice and silver, it'll uh, help just help uh, with regards to the presentation of the engine. Uh, that one should fit caution hot, yeah, we know that. Uh, that now goes onto there. Uh, that looked quite good. Got some free bolts here to put on. Where did my um, socket go? There it is. I'm gonna do this up by hand first, just to get them running. And that should improve the sound of it uh, drastically. So just loosey-goosey them up initially. The one down the bottom was snapped and the one I'm doing up now has snapped also just on the guard. 
so they have been rattling for a little while. But now with a new exhaust guard on, I might spray it black, it'll look better black I think. Uh, we can now do those up. And that'll improve that. And then the next one I'll do is do the pull cord on this because the pull cord was um, particularly short throw. So we'll move on to do that next. There you go. So that's that all now done up. Nice and tight. Exhaust is nice and tight as well. Now I want to do the um, the pull cord. Hopefully these will come off. Very loose. Normally the posts like to come up with these. But I've got all three off in one go, that's nice. Got a couple of washers on there. They're not really needed. I'm going to remove the pull cord assembly. I'm going to have a little look to see what the pull cord's like. Yeah, it's not a very long pull cord. It's only about it's only about five foot long. It needs to be about seven foot. So what you need to do with that is get a pair of snips, side cutters or something similar. I've got a pair of snips just over here. I've also got some pull cord as well. And all we're gonna do very quickly is gonna pull this pull cord out, cut it. Now it's not a bad little length that actually, so I may keep that just for other little projects um, and not get rid of it. Um, that'll actually fit in two stroke stuff. It is quite, quite small. So get a little screwdriver and then just poke that in the hole, stop it from unrecalling, okay? And now I wanna get into here, if I can see, just about. A little pair of forceps into the hole and just grab hold of that loop and pull that out. Okay, I'll keep hold of a bit of pull cord because it is quite thin stuff. And now you want about seven feet, give or take, of this one. So I'm six foot. So let's uh, go a bit above my head. It's going to be about there. It's about eight foot there. That'll do. And this is um, 3.5 mil um, pull cord. Clip that off, get a lighter. Burn the end. And then burn the other end as well. Just like so. Put a little point on it. Now the actual um, pull cord itself, it looks very, very dry. As I say, it's been commercially used. So with an air compressor, give it a blast off. And a little shot of WD-40. This is a bit of a birthday. It just loosen up all the, all the cogs and what have you. And then we want to then wind this um, this pull cord up a touch. So it, was, it had a very, very short throw on it. Now that's as far as that wants to go. Which is concerning because, um, as I say, it uh, had a very, very short throw on it. So let's go, let's measure this up now. Put the new pull cord through the hole and we want to line that up so it comes out the other side of the pull cord. Just there, there it goes. Get your screwdriver, push it back in again so it don't go nowhere. And then tighten up. Now this is actually, I believe, the wrong pull cord housing for this. It should have a slightly different one. And I believe this is the reason why um, it's got such a small throw on it. So I may actually have to change this out for a slightly longer, different pull cord. Um, housing, we shall see in a minute. So now that goes in there, and now that, let it retract up. Now it's taken pretty much all of it, which is good. So wind it all the way, give it a couple of pulls. You may want to put the string into a vise as well, just to stretch it out a bit. Um, let's give that a little tiny blow off up here as well. It's absolutely covered in stuff. Lots of uh, dirt and grime on here. Now I don't actually have a red one. Shame I didn't have a red one. I'll fit it on. And now the pull cord can now go back on. 
So as you remember, the last time we um the last time we um run this machine up, uh, it was knocking, which I believe to be the muffler. And I reckon um, the pull cord needed doing, but it has taken more pull cord in this time. So I'm gonna push that up to the top and uh, put this little tiny pull cord assembly onto it. Let's just run that through. I'm gonna put a little knot onto that. That don't come back on itself. That's it. And we're slowly gonna pull this machine over just till it hooks up onto there. I'm gonna get a pair of decent grips because the pull cord itself is not actually, um, it, it won't stay in there. So I wanna literally just wanna squeeze that up shut so that uh, the pull cord will stay in situ. And the grips are a bit worn. Just bend that into situ place so it, 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 won't, it won't come out on itself no more. It's gonna be about there, that's it. So now that won't, that won't come out. So we'll take it outside, and now I'm gonna give it another run. Hopefully it won't knock like it did. And hopefully, um, hopefully it'll run, and the pull cord won't be quite so short. So let me get it outside very quickly, and give it a quick little run, and then uh, we'll bring it back in. I've got to do a service on it. It's already had new oil already in it. I've got to do a blade sharp and balance, I've got to do air filter, and possibly a carburetor. So let's take it outside, quick little run, see if it doesn't um, hunt and muck about. It was mucking about yesterday or day before, so let's have a quick little look, I'll come back. Right, Honda HRX 537, new exhaust guard, exhaust now tightened up, and uh, pull cord now on. It was a bit short. Let's turn the fuel on. Uh, that way. Give it a second just to run through, and we get a bit of a run and see if it hasn't got rid of that, that horrible knocking noise that was there beforehand. Let's put it on to choke, and the pull cord literally um, is only coming to about here. Very short throw on the pull cord. So straight off the bat, the pull cord is coming all the way up to where it should be, all the way right back here, so that's perfect. So the pull cord is now fine. Locking noise is now gone, which is good. And there's actually less smoke coming out of the machine now. There's a little bit there, but uh, it wants a service. Very little smoke coming out of the machine now. so far. Just want to see if it's going to start hunting and mucking about. So we'll let it run for two or three minutes and then um, I'll come back and it starts mucking about but it was mucking about a bit earlier on. So give it two ticks and I'll come back. So I've just been in the shed just, just for three or four minutes and now it starts to, to dip in revs. So you'll hear it going again in a minute, he says. There you go. So that's what it's doing every now and again, a little tiny blip. And that gets progressively worse, I have noticed. There you go. So it's not running as well as it should do. I think it does it also when you put the clutch in. So it does the same thing. There you go. Okay. So I hope, hope to, to cure that with a carburetor clean. Um, so let's put it back up on the bench. We'll take the air filter out and we'll have a carburetor off. And then we'll, uh, we'll do a carburetor clean, see what it looks like inside. I'm guessing by the state of the spark plug and the air filter um, and the oil, um, the carburetor is probably in, uh, in dirty condition. So we'll uh, get that looked at. Give us two ticks, we'll go inside the shed, have a little look, see what it looks like, and uh, we'll be able to see from there. Right, back indoors. Riley boys here, say hi Riley. Hi. He's, he's come down and say hello. Um, so we've got the air filter box here. Um, and as you can see, the air filter itself, he said it's serviced every year. Um, there's, mm -hmm. there's lots, lots, yeah, lots, see how dirt in there? Dirty. Uh, lots of dirt in there. Um, and what have you, so that's no good. That can go in the trash, and I've got a brand spanking new um, air filter here for it. So that can go in. Now, as I say, it's got a little tiny bit of a hunt to it, um, which I'm a little bit concerned about. Um, but what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna remove 
um, the carburettor. You, you can just put that chair away, buddy, okay. So very gently remove the carburettor bolts. I'm just gonna take them off, slide them out. Now someone's actually been in here and uh, had a little bit of a, a little bit of a, um, a modification because they these are pickles. I know that Bruce was actually working on one a little while ago, and um, he said they're an absolute pain to um, to get in behind. Um, and someone's actually done a modification on this, which I'll just show you very shortly. It's stuck. It's stuck, is it? Yeah. That's because you got stuck on the, stuck on the old uh, thing. There you go. And try that. Rider boy's trying to get in nice and close next to his dad. Well, that's not. I don't want to come out. Let's get a bit more of a spin, just to help it. Try and hold the carburetor in place best you can whilst you're removing it, so then you can tell where all the gaskets go, because they do differ. So I can now take the air box off, and then you take off a crank breather case as well, that just pops off. And as I say, someone's actually cut this to suit, so then get in behind it, you see, that's what they've done. Uh, good, little, good little modification, but however, by doing that, you do allow dirt in. Uh, crank case breather pipe is okay, and and now what we can do is now we can now remove all of this lot. Just take a, a little photograph of what goes where. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward stuff. Um, this whole assembly comes off here. That's no biggie. Piggy. Yeah, no biggie. No piggy. That comes off and we've got no gasket behind it. There's a gasket on the engine um, and a fire shield. I need to remove the fuel line, which is located down here. And then there's just one, um, one throttle governor to remove off so that's no problem um, it's got automatic choke on it which is nice yeah. so I'll get a pair of long nose pliers fuel line is turned off no it doesn't hurt making that just got to try and remove this little tiny clamp mm -hmm. um, which would be no no uh, easy thing because the Hondas they have these little tiny silly clamps on it, which you really struggle to get at so I'm down in the depths just trying to work this uh, this clamp off um, and they are notorious for being a bit of a pickle. So I'll give it a bit of a spin. If I break the fuel line, um, I can just move it up a touch, but I don't really want to break it if I have to, which I have now done, so it's now broke. But I can now just cut that off. It's only about two or three mil I've, I've taken. So there goes the fuel line. So before you forget, what you want to do is just cut that fuel line uh, where I've just split it, which is about there. So let's just cut that off now, get rid of it, so it doesn't become a problem a bit later on. It's going to be about there. Let's just tidy it up. That's it. That's now done. And that still reaches the carburetor with no problem. So that's good. We can now tip this carburetor up to a side, and that governor arm should just pop out of there. It's not wanting to. I'll try and keep all this fuel inside the carburetor if I can. There it goes. So there's a the carburetor itself. There's a little tiny heat shield there. If you can try and remove that in one go without destroying the gasket, then you're on a winner. There it comes, that comes off. And that goes that way up with the little tiny tab pointing upwards. And there's our carburetor. So now I'm going to the bench and have a little look. But the, the carburetor, the choke flap, look how dirty all that is there. Look, loads of dirt coming out. So uh, this carburetor is well filthy. I'm going to give a quick little blow off and uh, a bit of a clean. And then we can then have a quick little look to see what's actually going on with this. Um, Try and clean it up and see, and we go from there. Right, so um, car breath is now um, off the machine. I've got it in the, on the side here. So I'll put some gloves on, so I don't want to introduce any more dirt into this car breather than what's needed. Um, it's been blown off on the top as well, a bit of WD-40, just to um, alleviate any foreign matter going into the uh, into the actual car breather. Give the old uh, Brucey Brucey tray a clean out. Get rid of any foreign matter there. And a bit of blue roll, just to lay on the bottom of a tray, just so we can see what sort of mess uh, we're dealing with. Like so, let's bring the carburetor in. There's a carby. And I want a uh, 10 mil. I just want to undo this um, bottom of the uh, carburetor bowl. I'm seeing some dirt already. So let's take that out and we'll have a little look. Just tip the carburetor on its side slightly because you want, you want to see what's inside this bowl, you see. So let's now take that out. I've got lots of matter here. I want a bit of a tap to try and release the bowl. There it goes. Yeah, it's not, it's not horrendous. There's bits of matter there that might come off from the outside of the bowl, but there's a little bit inside the bowl as well. 
uh, nothing too strenuous. We're going to take, remove the um, the pin and then remove the float and the needle. Now the needle, funnily enough, was not actually inside the inside the float itself. It should actually sit a little tiny um, union for it to sit in there. It wasn't actually in there, so uh, maybe that's the thing. Let me just grab my um, Honda homemade screwdriver. And I use, I've got three different types which I've manufactured with a grinder to remove the, uh, the main jet. This is my yellow one, which is which one I favor. Um, but we'll see how we get on. Yeah, the jet is spun, so it is loose. We're now gonna remove the main jet from the carby. Give it a bit of a tap. It wants to come out but it's not as of yet. They keep spinning it and then tap it and eventually it will work its way out. It's getting there. There it goes. There's a main jet and also inside here will be a tube. There's a tube that's coming. Oh, nearly. There's a tube. So that's now good. We now remove the tube. It's a quick inspect of that. Uh, holes seem to be relatively good, quite clean. Let's check the main jet for holes. There's a hole in the jet, okay, but it's not as big as it should be, nowhere near. So that is struggling for fuel. Um, we've also got a slow idle jet here to remove as well, which would be a Phillips, because that's the way Honda do things. So let's just grab a quick Phillips screwdriver. I've got one to hand, there's one. And uh, I'm just gonna undo this one. It should be about two and a half threads. I don't count them no more on the other side of the uh, screw. So just remove that. That comes out. And we've got a little tiny jet just up inside here. We're gonna remove that as well. Take that out. And that's an orifice inside there, which we can spray out with a uh, lube. There's a little tiny jet just inside there, you see it? Um, there's also a little jet here which um, you can remove also. Um, this is one of the older fashioned ones which is great. So I'm just going to do this one up first. So that's half a turn. That's one, about one full turn. That's all that was. Now I'm going to remove that one, which is a mixture as well. Take that on out because that won't blow through with carb clean and what have you. So that comes out. And then that's all that comes out of this carburetor, people, okay? Now, you can use carburetor spray, you can use WD-40. It's, it, it's your own preference, right? I don't believe this um, carburetor needs to go into the ultrasonic cleaner. I believe the main jet is a main culprit. There's not a big enough hole in there for that. Um, so what I'm going to do is just going to run this through with a bit of cleaner and then um, WD-40 and what have you. Spray it all through, all through the orifices, anywhere where there's a hole, spray it. Simple as. Um, and then we'll go from there and uh, we'll uh, reassemble the carburetor once I've done that. Okay, carburetor is now all cleaned uh, to the best of my ability. Um, the bowl has come up really, really well. Uh, that's now super duper clean. And also the main jet, I've since filed it. I don't know if you'll see it, but uh, the hole is now um, four times bigger than what it should have been or what it, what it was. So that was the main issue. I have also cleaned out the tube as well. That's now all been done. So tube goes in first push him in, and then your main jet then goes in. Oh, bit of dirt on my screwdriver, see that there? And then screw your main jet in. That's not gone in as I would like. Something's stopping that from going in. There it goes, that's better. Sort of cross-threaded it then. Screw that all the way in then people, and nip it down just nice and tight. Don't go, don't go overboard with it, okay? I'm gonna get a slightly bigger screwdriver. That's too big. <clears throat> just to make sure it's well seated. It should be that one there, there it is. That's it, that's down. Um, we can now get our float and our needle, and as I say, the float and needle, uh, it's got a little tiny um, socket that the needle sits in, the float sits in, sorry. Uh, and it's got to, someone's running up a, to an outboard motor around the back of my house, sorry about the noise. Uh, but that's got to sit inside there so it actually sits and hangs in position, okay? 
and then tip it float back and then just put it all into in the, as one uh, it wasn't in there um, the float came straight off without it so uh, that wasn't right put your, your needle into your float like so is that going to go come on baby there she goes that goes in now and what you can now do is test that by blowing on the uh, on the intake no air and then lift the float up air no air so that's sealing right we've also then got the little tiny uh, valve to put in here on this one which has been cleaned that goes all the way in screw it down so it's well seated and then back it off it was one turn so i'm just going to screw that down all the way so it's well seated Now someone's actually been at, been at this because there should be a little tiny cap on here. So well seated, which is there, and then one complete turnout, which is going to be about there. Um, so now that's all in position, we can now put our bowl back on, and then our nut goes on top, which is a 10 mil. And then with a little tiny <coughs> uh, 10 mil spanner, Nip that up, just well seat it, don't overdo it. <clears throat> and that's the carburetor now cleaned and ready to go back onto the machine. So I've got a couple more bits here to put in yet, I forgot. We've got this little tiny screw here, which goes into there. Yep. Dropping bits now. That goes into there, seat in. And then all we then want to do is put this one in. Problems you have with magnet magnetic screwdrivers. They're there, supposed to be there to help you. Put that one in. Oh my word. And then once about two and a half threads coming out the back of this, give or take. We can always adjust it later on, can't we? About there. Okay, so that's now all done, as I say, and we can now put that back onto the machine. Okay, so uh, carburetor is now back um, with the mower, which is all good. I want to fit the fuel line first. Push him on, that's on. That might be a mistake. Uh, put the uh, throttle governor arm back on. If I can tip the car up right enough, yeah, I can do. And then the throttle spring. That all goes on. That's all now in place. We've got this little tiny gudge in here, uh, which would always go um, onto the block. It goes with the square bit here uh, onto the block, okay? That'll go up like so. That sits all into there. And then we've got a heat shield, which will also go in between, like so. That all sits into place. And then you get your air box, and this is what Bruce was saying about the carburetors, you can't, you can't get in there, but as I say, someone has modified this one slightly. So we can now put the bolts in, fish it through the first part of a carburetor and gasket. So it holds a carburetor and gasket up into place. Give it a go in. I don't want to go in there. I think these threads are a little bit, uh, I don't know, someone's got a bit of a bend up on there by the looks of it. Yeah, someone's bent that one up. That's handy, Harry. That's like a little bit of a bend in there. Clean the old threads up a touch. Look, someone's uh, put it on the wonk. Which is not good. <clears throat> now we try again. That one in. Lift it all up into position. I might get a bit of a bit of therapy with the old impact. 
just to get it started. There it goes. <clears throat> Through the back of a carb. Got to pick it all up together. Through the back of a carburetor. There it goes. And now you've got to put the heat shield on, which has fallen down. This is why they are, they are a bit of a pickle. Heat shield on, there it goes. And then push up through, and then through the back of the block as well. It's all a bit of a, a bit of a tight situation to get all the slot to go in. Get the second bolt, <clears throat> try to line that one up. That's all gone in, that's all gone in. Through the other heat shield. They are, they are a bit fiddly, a bit of perseverance required. That one, through that block. Oh my word. That's it. Get it on the block. That's one, we've got one. Go around the other side. Lining up the heat shield. <clears throat> you can see the hole. That's gone through there. It's got to wiggle this back block now, try and get that to go in. But I say these bolts are a bit, uh, a little bit uh, bent. Some had a bit of a go at them. I might just impact it slightly. Just to get it to run. That one as well, that's gone in. So let's pick up this air box slightly, that one's gone in. So now it's all gone into place, we can now offer this onto the machine and into its holes. There's another gasket there to worry about, that's it there. So that's that one, that one's taken, and now hopefully the back one is taken also, which it has. We can now gently run them home. It not too tight, and then we can then get the uh, new air filter. It's already had a new plug put in it. That goes in, that goes on. So now it's all done. I need to just turn the fuel on and check for leaks. These are renowned for, for leaking a little bit as well. So I'm just literally going to run some fuel into this machine, into the carburetor. Uh, let that sit for two or three minutes. Once it's sat for two or three minutes and I've got no leaks, I'm quite happy with it, then um, I'll take it outside, meet you outside, and then we'll go for another run up and uh, see if uh, this hasn't stopped the uh, hunting issue. Okay, carburetor now cleaned. Hopes we've been put back together properly. Uh, no fuel leaks, which is good. Um, let's see if now it doesn't start and run and got rid of that hunting issue. On the choke. Um, no smoke out of this machine now. The new air filter is now breathing the air and it should do. Listen, no smoke at all. So I'll let that run now. Um, just double check the fuel, make sure the fuel's good, um, level wise. And we'll see if now it doesn't uh, drop down in red like it was before. It took about two or three minutes to do so, so give us two or three minutes. Okay, so now the lawnmower has been running for about five minutes. Uh, no oil leaks, no fuel leaks. It idles. It wants a bit of a tune on the on the low end, just to pick that up a touch. And it will idle, but it wants this tuning. It just wants to bring it up a smidge. That's all it wants. We can do that with a screwdriver. Uh, but it runs, um, and it's not hunting like it was before. No hunt. And also, as I say, no smoke now coming out of that muffler. Very small amount there, but has just been idle, has just been running, so. No, it's all good. So this machine's now up and running as it should do. All I've got to do is sharpen the blade. Okay, so that's that Honda HRX now all up and running, doing exactly what it should do. I bought it for a little bit more money than what I normally would spend, um, but now it all runs. New spark plug, new air filter, carburetor clean, all changed, no oil leaks, no fuel leaks, 
doing exactly what it should do. Um, the drive is a little bit graunchy. I might just have to look into that and just give it a bit of a lube up. That's all it needs, I think. It, it, it's very, very strong, but it is a bit graunchy because it's had a few um, hours on the old clock. Uh, got to take the, um, the blades off, his two blades on these, um, take the blades off and uh, give them a bit of a sharpen as well, a bit of a balance up, and then that lawnmower will be up for sale and should make some really, really good money. Um, so super impressed with that one. What do you think? Think it's all right? Uh, yeah. You do, right, cool. Also, whilst I just remember, I did get a, um, a little parcel. It's already open, buddy. For me? No, it's for Daddy. A little parcel. Did Someone he? sent me off my Amazon wish list a little set of um, uh, Carbretta Classic Springs. Uh, for the governor or what have you. So super, super impressed with that. Thank you very much indeed. Well, what do you want? Feel free to check out my Amazon wishes within the comments section or within my about section if you want to buy me or Riley Boy a little something uh, for our YouTube journey. So that's super cool. If this is your first time in watching Mixed Mirrors, hit the subscribe button, whack the old bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told that when I've done a video or two, I'm on my Saturday night live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. I look forward to seeing the next episode of Mixed Mirrors very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, much more importantly, take care easy.